The title of our book is How Murray Saved Christmas by Mike Reese, illustrated by David Catro. Twas the night before Christmas, and at the North Pole, Santa was rockin' and ready to roll. His seat belt was buckled, his reindeer were fed, and five billion toys were stuffed into his sled. There were dolls that said mama, and dolls that said goo. There were dolls that made music, and dolls that made poo. There were dolls that grew tall at the push of a button, and a doll, best of all, that didn't do nothing. He revved up his reindeer, about to take off, when all of a sudden he heard a small cough. <clears throat> Santa, uh ahem, could I have your attention? It was Edison Elf with his latest invention. Now Edison thought of himself as a tinker, but as a tinker he was sort of a stinker. My jack-in-the-boxer belongs on your list. It's a jack-in-the-box with a fabulous twist. So Santa Claus tried it, and oh, what a trick. A boxing glove popped out and knocked out St. Nick. He wobbled. He bobbled. His face turned bright red. A lump like a sugar plum rose in his head. Santa, cried Eddie, but Santa said, glibble. Um, perfectly schnibble, then started to dribble. Ed dressed him in jammies and put him to bed. And worried just who would bring presents instead. Then a card fluttered down out of Santa's right mitten, and on it, in round golden letters, was written, for special delivery, call Murray Kleiner, owner of Murray K's Holiday Diner. Now Santa and all of the holiday bunch would come into Murray's for breakfast or lunch. You might see George Washington eating and drinking on President's Day with Abraham Lincoln. Cupid loved bagels. The groundhog, the chili. The Thanksgiving turkey would stuff himself silly. And how, you might wonder, did Santa get fat? Just thank Murray's chocolate chip cheesecake for that. But lunchtime was past. It was late Christmas Eve. Murray had closed and was ready to leave. When Ed parked the sleigh and he hollered to Murray, I need a delivery and I'm in a big hurry. Murray said, I can make you whatever you wish, a nice piece of fish or a spinach knish. But who are you, Shorty? And where is St. Nick? Edison sobbed. I made Santa Claus sick. And now I need you to deliver some toys to 200 countries to good girls and boys. Just put on this red suit and get in the sleigh. What? Are you cuckoo? cried Murray. No way. Give me one reason to schlep through the snow, bringing billions of presents to kids I don't know. Will anyone pay me? Will anyone tip? What if I slip and I fracture my hip? 
Look out the window. It's cold and it's shivery. Why in the world should I make this delivery? Because it's Christmas, said Ed. Christmas, you know, is that one special season when people do good things without a good reason. The grouchiest men will wear musical ties and buy Christmas presents for folks they despise. The cheapest of cheapskates will spend all his money and people make fruitcakes from concrete and honey. Christmas works magic and Edison knew it. You're not paying fair, Murray grumped, but I'll do it. Murray put on the suit. The belly was baggy. The shoulders were saggy. The bottom was draggy. I'm fat, Murray said, but it seems sad as fatter. The caboose is quite loose, but I guess it won't matter. Then they hopped in the sleigh, which sped off like a comet, causing Murray to holler, Slow down, or I'll vomit. I've just got one rule, but, Shorty, it's basic. If you go too fast, then I'm bound to get sleigh-sick. They made their first stop, Eddie fearing the worst. Murray fell down the chimney and landed tush first. He didn't come back till a quarter past two when Eddie cried, Murray, what happened to you? Murray shrugged. By the fireplace, kids hung up the socks. So I loaded the socks up with bagels and locks. They went to the next house. It didn't go better. Murray got bit by a big Irish setter. He stepped on a turtle at house number three. At house number four, he knocked over the tree. I'm old and I'm cold, and this suit doesn't fit. If the next stop goes badly, said Murray, I quit. The elf couldn't blame him. Poor Murray had tried. You're going to do great, little Edison lied. Murray jumped down the chimney and landed so hard, the thud knocked the snow off the trees in the yard. He got to his feet with an oof and an oi and found himself facing a six-year-old boy. The boy exclaimed, Santa! And Murray said, Where? Oh, right, you mean me. Yes, I'm Santa, I swear. Get a load of this laugh. Ho, 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 Murray chuckled. But just as he chuckled, his belt came unbuckled, and his pants, which were loose, went down straight past his knees. Murray Kleiner was stitched on his silk BVDs. The boy looked perplexed, so he said, please explain why you and your underpants have different names. Betrayed by his boxers, let down by his pants, Murray knew a good story would be his best chance. So he said, Murray Kleiner's a famous designer. Calvin Klein may be fine. See, but Kleiner is finer. Are you sure you're Santa? You don't have a beard. Your suit is all baggy. You smell kind of weird. I shaved off the beard. Mrs. Claus said it tickles. And I went on a diet club soda and pickles. That should explain why I'm beardless and bellyless. 
the pickles would also account for my smelliness. So there, I've explained. I've made everything clear. And the boy asked him to name his reindeer. Murray hemmed and he hawed. He did not know this stuff. So he huffed and he puffed and proceeded to bluff. There's Dumbo and Jumbo and Mason and Dixon, Cosmo and Kramer, and Richard and Nixon. Murray looked at him hopefully. How did I do? You're a fake, the boy cried. I guess Santa is too. <laughs> Murray said, there's a Santa and I've got the proof. They went out on the lawn and looked up at the roof. That Santa's sleigh sitting there in the snow and there's toys and the reindeer whose names I don't know. Oh, Santa is real, kid. It's wrestling that's fake. And that's when the boy knew he'd made a mistake. This wasn't just some smelly guy in a suit but an honest-to-goodness St. Nick substitute. <laughs> and when the boy smiled, Murray felt a strange tingle. He knew for one night that he could be Kris Kringle. Ho, 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 Murray laughed, and he patted his head and he fixed a Malene pastrami sandwich with coleslaw and a triple thick chocolate milkshake and sent him to bed. Then Edison asked if he still felt like quitting. Quitting, cried Murray. You've got to be kidding. Enough of that talk. We've got toys to deliver. We can't sit around like two lumps of chopped liver. From Nome down to Rome, and from Ops to Atlanta, they handed out presents more quickly than Santa. You did a great job, Eddie said, and he smiled. Tonight you bought presents to every good child. Let's not stop, Murray said. We have time. We have toys. Why can't we bring them to bad girls and boys? So a kid might be lazy, he might be a slob, he drives his folks crazy. Mm, that's sort of his job. Ed heard what he said, and he couldn't resist. They brought toys to the naughty, a very long list. A toboggan for Ogden, who played sick from school and drove his dad's Pontiac into the pool. For Brooke, a good book, since she broke the TV, the VCR, PC, and every CD. <coughs> and a jet plane for Dwayne, a mischievous <coughs> fellow who filled the girls' toilets with blueberry jello. Murray brought presents to all not so good kids, the rule and the crude and the misunderstood kids. And people said Christmas was never so pleasant as that year when all of the world got a present. <coughs> Murray said, well, there's nothing for us in the sack. So he gave it a hug and Ed gave him one back. You know, you're a nice guy, said Edison Elf. Thanks, Murray said. You're not half bad yourself. On lipstick, on dipstick, on Pixie and Dixie, on Cramden and Norton and Alice and Trixie. And Edison said, as they rode out of sight, Murray, Christmas to all. And to all, a good night. <laughs>